Hello, I'm Kate, and today's tutorial showcases a fun project perfect for scrap quilting cottons. We're going to create easy to sew mug mats or hot pads with the look of patchwork, but without a lot of seams. I'll be showing you how to add a pocket to transform the mug mat into a hot pad. Welcome to the Sally Tomato YouTube channel. If you're new to sewing or you enjoy sewing as a creative expression, you're in the right place. Today we're making the Clarence mug mats or hot pads. These delightful designs are created with minimal sewing and are the most fun when using a variety of quilting cotton scraps. Top stitching gives the illusion of seams. A set of Clarence mug mats would look so welcoming with our Cora Tea Cozy pattern and our free napkin download for a sweet tea party right at home. The patterns can be found at your local quilt shop or sallytomato.com. The mug mats and hot pads finish to about six inches square. They feature faux patchwork, the optional hot pad pocket, binding, and optional hanging loop. Be sure you have the pattern before we get started. See the description below this video and follow the link to access the pattern information. All the supplies you need are listed on the back of the pattern. This project is the most fun when you're using using a variety of quilting cotton. The scrappier, the better. Have fun creating themes with your scrap fabrics. I'll be using a cheery combination in a little bit of a holiday look. Okay, once you decide on your fabrics, gather your pattern and supplies, cut out all the pieces that you need following the pattern, and let's begin. Be sure to follow your pattern for cutting all the pieces that you'll need. I've already cut my pieces, so I have binding strips. I'm going to set those aside. We won't need those right away. Now we're going to go to all the squares. You'll want to select squares for your backs. I like to label them as A and set them aside. And then also select squares for your bases. This will be what you're going to build the patchwork on. I label those as B and set those aside for the time being. Now with the remaining squares, and here this is where the scrappier the better because you can really have some fun with your designs that we'll be kind of playing with in the next couple steps. So you'll cut these remaining squares into smaller squares. Then if you'd like, you can label each color of these smaller squares as C, D, and E if you want to keep a little more organized. I've also gone ahead and selected a contrast fabric. This is going to be for the optional hand pocket, so you don't have to have this extra contrast fabric unless you'd like the hot pads. And then also you'll need squares of batting. You're going to place one piece A with the wrong side up. This is going to be the back of your mug mat or hot pad. Stack one or two pieces H, that's your batting square, on top of your piece A, keeping all the raw edges aligned. And then position one piece B, that's going to be your base that you had set aside with the right side up on top of this stack of fabrics and batting, aligning all the edges. You can certainly use basting spray or basting tape or sewing clips to hold the layers together. At the sewing machine, baste the outer edges with an eighth inch seam allowance. This is securing all the layers. Now let's move on to preparing the pieces C, D, and E. This is going to create our faux patchwork. First fold each piece in half on the diagonal with wrong sides together, aligning the corners and the raw edges. With your iron or pressing tool, press the folds, creating triangles.
Select four triangles of the same main fabric color. I'm going to start by folding just one triangle in half again, aligning the raw edges and matching the corners. Then press that fold, creating a smaller triangle. I'm going to repeat the same process for the remaining three triangles of this same fabric color. Now this is where you can really have fun with your fabric choices. Arrange the large and small triangles on your piece B, that's your prepared hotbed or mug mat base. You'll align outer edges or at least make sure the raw edges are covered by another triangle so you can do some layering here. Have fun with your arranging. You don't have to decide on any one design right away. Press the smaller squares into the large triangles and even press the larger triangles into smaller triangles as needed to create your own arrangements. You may find a square quilting ruler is really helpful for keeping your triangle points centered and aligned. Hold all the pieces in place with pins or sewing clips. Once you like your arrangements, baste the outer edges of the hot pad or mug mat with an eighth inch allowance, securing all the layers. You'll top stitch along each folded edge of your faux patchwork. This is what's going to hold those points in place. Depending on what arrangement you're creating with your triangles, you may have some parts of the triangle extending beyond the base. Be sure to trim those triangle extensions even with your base if you need to. You can certainly choose how much top stitching or quilting you'd like to add. I'm going to go ahead and stitch down my smaller triangles just to make it a flatter look. But in some of your designs, you may prefer to leave your little triangle points without any top stitching. For an optional hand pocket, this is going to convert our mug mat into the hot pad. Press one edge of your piece G, that's the contrast square, to the wrong side twice. This is creating a hem. And then top stitch along the inner fold edge of that hem. You might try a hot hammer, which is a perfect pressing tool for accurate crisp folds. Align piece G, that's the hand pocket, on the back of your hot pad, aligning all the raw edges. And then baste in place along the outer edges. If you'd like to add the finger loop, the best corner to begin attaching your binding is just above the pocket hem edge. So I'm going to begin attaching my binding at the upper right hand corner of my hot pad. Now we're ready to assemble and attach the binding. Be sure to download Jess's free layering, quilting, and binding guide for her favorite binding method or use yours. You could also try using pre-made binding for an even faster finishing.
end your sewing at the same corner, folding the beginning portion of the binding end out of the way. Then press the long raw edges to the wrong side of the binding. Then you're going to cut the extending tail, giving yourself a length for that finger loop and the dimension that we recommend is in your pattern. Sew the remaining fold of your binding in place, beginning at the corner. At the end of the binding, align the pressed folds together, encasing the binding beginning end. So you're just covering it. If you really want your little mitered corners to be secure, you can certainly stitch down right close to the point, not all the way to the point of your hot pad or mug mat, and then reverse back to where you started or turn your work with the needle down or kind of a pivot and stitch back to the beginning at that inner corner and continue along the straight edge. and then top stitch to the end of the binding tail. You're going to fold the tail to the underside of your pot holder and then just simply top stitch it in place. I hope you enjoyed sewing faux patchwork with me today. Let us know in the comments if you have any questions or suggestions for this pattern. Please share and show off your photos of your completed hot pads or mug mats. We'd love to see your home decorating style incorporating the Clarence hot pads. Use the hashtags Sally Tomato and Clarence Pattern on social media so we can see your creations. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thanks so much for watching. For more creative projects, be sure to check out the rest of our pattern line. Have a great making day.